Welcome back. So now we're going to talk about crowdfunding, okay? And the problem with crowdfunding, it's still a relatively new thing. So we're trying to struggle with what it is exactly, and different countries have different kinds of laws and regulations on it, and they're still trying to interpret what works and doesn't work. But basically the idea behind crowdfunding is that an entrepreneur pitches an idea, okay? This is the initiator. Through a platform, such as Kickstarter or whatever, to potential investors. Okay? So it's a little bit different than what we saw in incubators and accelerators, right? Because the incubator and the accelerator, the entrepreneur is developing the idea and then they're going out, whether it's with the help of the incubator or accelerator or not, but then they're going out to find investors, right? So now we're going to switch, we're going to flip the logic. Instead of the entrepreneur looking for funds exogenously out there in the environment, they're going to focus endogenously, trying to perfect the product the best that they can inside the organization, and then they use the platform and investors come to them. Okay? Of course, there's some advantages and disadvantages to this, right? The advantage is that the entrepreneur can really focus on the product as opposed to like the demo day or, or, or whatever. So that's, that's huge, right? Um, there's a lot of marketing and PR that's associated with crowdfunding, right? Um, you know, you're going out there, people are discovering your product, and of course, when people start donating or giving money through the crowdfunding, you know, that gives you more legitimacy and then you can keep growing. So all that's really cool. Of course, what are some of the downsides? Of course, there's no training program or anything with a crowdfunding thing. And of course, when you put your idea out there early on, it makes it very easy for other people to copy it. And of course, from an investor's perspective, it's very hard to really evaluate ventures just through a platform, right? Oh, this looks cool on the website, but you know, with the Accelerate, you know, you've got you've got staff looking and working and evaluating, you know, right there throughout the process. With crowdfunding, I mean, it's you know, you take your chances and you go. I'm not saying it's bad, but you know, you just gotta have a certain risk profile for that. Okay. And so, there's kind of four major types of crowdfunding. You've got your donation-based, reward-based, lending-based, and equity-based. And, I, you know, of course, everything in academia has to be in a two-by-two two matrix, right? So, dynamics of return. Do you remember I talked about those dilutable versus non-dilutable investments when we were talking about accelerators? That's what we're looking at with dynamics of return. How dilutable is the investment? And then the form of obligation. Are you, you know, paying it back with um, financial or non-financial means? So let me just kind of walk you through this, and I think it'll make a little more, a little more sense. Imagine you've got a really cool social cause, okay? And you go onto a crowdfunding um, platform and you say, hey, you know, I've got this really cool project, and what it's going to do is it's going to allow people in this rural African village to have access to clean water. I've got these tools and techniques. This is a nonprofit. I just need your help to... Um, with financing so that I can buy the water pumps and then fly over to Kenya and install all this stuff. Okay, that's a really nice feel-good kind of thing. So, the form of obligation, my payback to you is going to be non-financial. Okay, it's, it's a donation-based campaign and your reward is the fact that you know that you're giving people in Kenya clean water. Okay. The dynamics of the return are going to be high in this case. Why? Because it's like the more kind of a feel-good initiative you have, and the, um, the more this venture grows, the more you feel good about it, right? So if I donate $1,000 to some sort of a brand new kind of venture giving you know, clean water to Kenya, and it becomes the next big thing, I say, wow, I was one of the first people to donate to that. My $1,000 has given you know, tens of thousands of dollars of economic and regional development to people in Kenya. You know, or if it was just a really small thing, it's like, wow, I paid a thousand dollars, and you know, that was about a thousand dollars of social good that came out of it. I'm happy. Okay, that's why it's a high dynamic of return. Now, there's also reward based. One example of a reward based, and I believe the company is called Beam Dog. Um, you know, I was a child of the '90s, and well, I was a slightly older child in the 2000s, but you know, that's a topic for another video. And there was a, a game that I had played in college. It was called Baldur's Gate. So I don't know if any of you've heard of it. And it was a big classic back in those days. And there was a company that was called Beam Dog or Overhaul Games, or Overhaul Games was part of Beam Dog. Beam Dog I don't remember. You know, 
exactly the relationship. But what they said is they said, you know what we want to do? We want to bring a classic game like Baldur's Gate back and, you know, not use all the CDs and, you know, make, you know, make it look better and add some extra features and stuff. And we're going to basically remake this game. Okay. And so they wondered, would people actually like something like this? So they went to the, they went to, um, crowdfunding can, uh, site and they launched their campaign and so if you donated you know the 50 or 60 dollars to this crowdfunding thing then when the game came out you would get one of the first copies so it's reward based now the dynamics of the return don't increase right they're planning on selling the game for 60 bucks a piece you're basically almost doing like a pre-order right and it's a non-financial like you get the game but you don't get any extra money now let's look at the other side. Oops. You can have something that's equity based. And so I can go out there in this crowdfunding campaign and basically say, hey, look, I really can't get this thing off the ground. You know, if you give me $10,000, I'll give you 10% of the new venture. That's equity based. And that has a financial value, this equity. And it is a high dynamic of return. Again, it's like those non dilutable shares. So if I sell 10% of my company for $10,000, um, and if I don't have some sort of a stipulation that um, those shares can be diluted after a certain, uh, or that those shares can be diluted after a certain point, then I've basically sold 10% of my company. And if you know 10% of you know my company's worth $10,000 today, but you know 10 years down the road, maybe my company's worth a million dollars, and now that initial investment that they made is worth $100,000. That's why those you have to watch those dilution agreements. You can always say, well. You'll have 10% of the company up to fifty thousand dollars, up to the fifty thousand dollar mark. So after five hundred thousand dollars, if I continue to grow, I don't have to keep, you know, dealing with that initial obligation. Okay, so that's a high dynamic of return. And then you can also use crowd crowdfunding, quite frankly, to just get a loan, right? Well, I'll tell you what. I need fifty thousand dollars. You pay it through this crowdfunding platform. Say so that's a financial obligation, but it's a low dynamic of return because I'll pay you the fifty thousand dollars back at you know six or seven percent interest rate, whatever whatever we agree upon. But that's a low dynamic of return. You give me fifty thousand dollars at a certain interest rate. I know that up front, and then we just take care of it from there. That's all that means. So these are the different kinds of crowdfunding platforms. We've already talked about the advantages and disadvantages. In the last video on this playlist, we're going to talk about um, whether engaging in any of these kinds of uh, funding sources guarantees your success as an entrepreneur. As always, give me a like, that's a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Um, and comment down below. I got some questions for y'all. Do any of you have any experience with this donation, reward based, lending based, equity based, or just crowdfunding in general? If so, tell us a little bit about your experiences. I'd, I'd love to uh, learn a little bit more from you. Great, I'll see you in the next video.